Hello uh, everybody, we are here in uh, Bucharest uh, with uh, high-level executives from uh, all over uh, Europe uh, to gather for the 33rd uh, Plenary Assembly of uh, Post-Europe uh, with our history of 24 years. So it means that for two days uh, this week uh, Bucharest is becoming of the capital, European capital of the postal industry. And thanks for the support of uh, Romanian Post and all the Romanian authorities. Hello everyone, how is your first feeling in our country? As a matter of fact, um, many of us uh, already visited uh, in 2008, uh, four, 2004 the uh, Bucharest for the Congress of the UPU. And uh, we can measure how the country and the city have changed for the better uh, since then. Uh, uh, very lively and uh, dynamic uh, city and uh, we were happy to, 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 to see that developing well. This year we have 43 members and 7 represented out of 52, which is a very good uh, number. So um, many, because we, we are member-driven uh, organizations, so uh, our members are important. They, they, they m make the life of the association. And um, every year we, we see where we are, where we want to go. Uh, and of course we will also deal with issues uh, related to UPU, our mother company in a way, that is uh, uh, we are a restricted union of, of the UPU and we, we have the great pleasure and honor uh, to have um, Mr. Hussein, Ambassador Hussein, uh, uh, who is the DG of, of the UPU. Can you be more specific in the topics and objectives of this plenary session? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, beyond the so-called uh, statutory uh, issues, uh, we deal with uh, European Union uh, related uh, issues, very important ones uh, with special regard to the e-commerce, uh, the growing uh, market and how the postal sector uh, can react to that in terms of uh, postal uh, delivery skills. Uh, there is also a, a draft regulation on the table of the uh, countries and of the postal operators for this uh, coming from uh, Brussels. So this is something uh, that is high on our agenda. Another point is uh, to discuss about uh, the reform of uh, UPU uh, to, to form a common uh, European position in this regard, as next year there will be an extraordinary Congress uh, in Addis Ababa in September, and this uh, plenary is a very important step to prepare for that uh, in a European context. And last but, last but not least, I would also like to mention that we have a business, business forum, forum. Uh, dealing with uh, big data. We know uh, uh, what the definition of, of big data is, we know in general terms, uh, what it can mean uh, for the economy, but our intention is to discuss what the postal operators can do by using big data to generate additional uh, business opportunities for e-commerce, but also for other areas. Do you love it or hate it? Yes, uh, it's no uh, option, uh, actually. That's so, it. We have uh, to live with it. We have to live with it, <laughs> yes. And maybe to, to create better services. That's Absolutely. The idea. Yes, it's a new channel of uh, service possibility of products for our operators. We understand that uh, postal companies uh, deal with a lot of data. It's one of our unique selling uh, propositions, actually, that we are uh, close to the uh, citizens, close to the businesses, small and medium enterprises, but also to the large accounts. We are a proximity business, so uh, our business, even the traditional business, but also the more modern one, generates a lot of data that we can use. And the question is how we can convert it into uh, daily cash 
uh, revenue, uh, this kind of uh, skill and capability of the postal sector. For example, in the area of uh, direct marketing, but this is just uh, one example. Well, it's an opportunity to better serve the customers, customers. And, uh, and respecting the privacy. Because uh, some other operators, I will not name, sometimes do not respect very well the, the, the privacy issues when we, we are attached to that. So you are preparing yourself for the next step of GDPR that will be established next year. Yeah. Yes, maybe you, from the UPU perspective, can talk a little bit more about this problem. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Hussein. I'm the Director General of Universal Postal Union, which uh, is the, the glue that holds together the 192 different networks of postal organizations in the world. An intergovernmental organization, an agency of United Nations. So, uh, that is uh, a very powerful institution that gives us a role and relevance in the communication and also the, the business uh, of the postal industry. Now, our role is to support the member countries, to support the restricted unions in their endeavors to be able to position themselves as world leaders in the business, to be the best in the class, to come up with standards and rules and procedures and treaties that make it easy for cross-border mail to thrive and uh, grow. So that is my role as a Director General. In simple terms, we provide technical and professional advice and we also uh, build up the global strategy that is adopted by member countries to help them improve on their businesses. So my role here is normally when restricted unions meet and they have global agendas they're discussing, the UPU is normally invited to give their insight and uh, also to give advice and also information. So I'm here uh, at the courtesy of the invitation of my colleagues here and we are proud to be in your beautiful country. Thank you. How are you going to reform UPU and how can Post Europe support your uh, strategies? Excellent. Uh, reform is something which is uh, really, really uh, urgent and necessary. If you recall uh, last week, the uh, United Nations General Assembly today in the UN, which is currently going on, the biggest topic on the agenda is reform of the United Nations itself. I was told that uh, Mr. Trump had assembled near 100 <laughs> 130 countries and his first agenda is to make sure that we get reform done for the UN. We are UN organization or rather a specialist agency of the United Nations. So reform, what is it for? It's not just reforming things for the sake of it. We, when you reform something, which means you are discarding certain habits and practices which are not serving you, your customers, which are transforming faster than ourselves. We are in a digital world today. The youth, the people who are, the mode of business has changed. They have changed, the, the, the youngsters, people today, the world population, 70, 80% are, are below the age of 40. These people are, are, are wired to these gadgets. And they, so that has opened up a horizon, a huge space for us, for them to buy and shop online. So how do we then meet the expectations and the speed with which they want these things done? That is now the challenge for us. So we have to really use the same technologies, go into their mind, go into the uh, uh, purchasing practices and habits, and come up with solutions and give them uh, tailor-made services that meet the expectation. That is why we all get together, put our strategies, and come with really concrete results that can be applied globally by member countries. So this is a big, big job for us, but uh, is one which is very exciting, and we believe that we are best in the market. Okay, let's turn back to the big data subject that we really love <laughs> and want to see it on the market. From your general overview, because you have a great experience and you, you are focusing on so many countries, how do you see the big data strategies implemented for each particular country? Because we are so very different. Well, I am not a technical expert on big data myself. I am not, uh, I'm just an administrator and a manager. Perhaps my colleague, uh, who is the director of marketing and, and strategy here, maybe have better views on this, but basically what is big data? Big data is the data we have generated out of the, the traffic we see, the volumes we see, the trends we see in the market, the, 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 the figures, the statistics uh, that uh, comes out from the economies and, and business. So all this 
is what we now make, uh, process this data, get information, get to see where is the market. Where do you think uh, this will give information and give an informed decision to the, the, the leaders who are doing, uh, preparing their strategies on where to identify the markets and provide what services are required. So that is, in a nutshell, I think, my understanding of the big data, but I probably my colleague can be able to add some. Um, I think it's important to understand that the UPU, as an intergovernmental organization, and particularly focused on um, physical goods and digital services, is a repository for a lot of data that's been exchanged between member countries. And, and by virtue of being a repository of that data, there's an opportunity to actually find the trends in that data. And when you begin to, and that's really what big data is about. It's actually making, it, it's not about storing the data, but it's actually um, analyzing the data and pulling out lessons and insights from the data to inform your decisions. And what the UPU is trying to do, and, and together with uh, a lot of uh, our stakeholders, is to, to pull out those insights to inform not only uh, governments in their decision making, but also uh, our very important stakeholder community, our operators in, in the delivery of their services. Um, so it's a, it's a mixed thing. So in, in the case of the governments, for example, we have developed a tool called the 2IPD, which is basically a postal development indicator. It draws data, macroeconomic and microeconomic data from what we've got, uh, to draw uh, important insights as to how governments and uh, their countries are tracking in terms of postal development. And from that, you are able to develop policy prescriptions. And likewise, for the business perspective, we can, through a lot of our scan events and, and tracking data, actually provide real time and potentially even um, you know, future uh, predictions in terms of how deliveries are happening, where, the, um, where things are being stuck, uh, and we call it linked to either in customs or in air transportation, and how do we actually deal with these problems. So um, it, there is a lot of very useful data, uh, very useful means by which we can actually pull out insights from the data. But I go back to John Paul's point. Um, this data is, is uh, in, in many respects, personal and confidential data. So there's a, a very important need to protect uh, privacy, uh, the confidentiality of that information, and particularly where that information, if it's coming from uh, postal operators and business enterprises, it's commercially sensitive. So we've got to create uh, an appropriate regulatory framework within which that data can be exchanged and analyzed. You think that the postal sector is prepared for the GDPR step? I think we are. We are, we are taking all the right, uh, right steps and we are, we are heading in the right direction. Uh, in my sense from being party to those discussions is that we are either leading the curve uh, in terms of policy development or we are amongst uh, uh, the, the leading group of country, uh, institutions. Turning back to the big data, what have you learned from the other industries that are already using big data? What kind of services do you think you can bring on the market? I think that first, what we've learned um, uh, about what happens on, on, on this market um, is that you, you shouldn't mix, everything shouldn't be open data. We, we have an issue on that. Uh, we, 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 many of us are state-owned, and uh, people consider that everything uh, which is, the, the, the data we collect should be open to everybody. Um, and and, and th there is a limit to that. Of course, we, we, we can share, and we do share many things about uh, postcodes, about uh, many postal issues to, to, to open it to, uh, competitors and 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 to uh, uh, to to other uh, stakeholders in the market, um, but we, we 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 are not here to 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 give also gifts to to competitors. Uh, we we are also uh, companies. Uh, we have our issues on mail declining. We 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 also want to make a little money on, and and include. Uh, the process in our process uh, to to better serve, as I said before, the the, the customers, but um, we we can also sell and offer informations to many applications and uh, uh, other stakeholders. 
who will use it for their own purpose. So um, there, there's a triple issue uh, for us uh, to, to better serve our, our uh, customers, to, to um, get some money from this, uh, all these uh, uh, data uh, which are available, and, and, and to bring data to the market so that they are able to, to, to build on that. And I think uh, it's important to mention one thing related to the poster business application <coughs> of uh, big data. Because what we learn from other industries is, who perhaps uh, are a bit uh, more progressed in this regard, that there is a business possibility in using uh, big data. Like my favorite example is uh, uh, Google Maps and the traffic information on that. So uh, technical daily things like that uh, can be very useful also, for example, in terms of the uh, traffic optimization of postal operators. But we also see that uh, uh, though we live in a, a digitized world, a world and we use data, uh, this part of the postal business, not taking now the uh, mobile telephony or the financial services, but this logistics-based part of the postal business with the mail and parcel is a physical activity. So letter mail and especially parcel cannot be delivered by internet. So it still has to be done physically. And this is the key unique selling opposition of postal operators. And the idea is to bring this digital world into uh, developing our physical activities. And big data, we believe in that. And our business forum will, uh, will show great examples on this. So we believe that it will be a useful tool uh, for the postal operators. But we will know more about that at the end of our forum. That's the idea that uh, everybody will learn a lot uh, uh, during the business forum. Including us. And, uh, including <laughs> us as well. And we return to our home countries by uh, knowing more. By step by step, it seems that the postal industry is becoming a very technological one. It and is. you are yes. going to be a very key player in uh, all these big things that everybody is talking about these days. Digital uh, transformation, Internet of Things, Smart City. It seems that you are there because you are going to change a lot the services yeah. that you are offering to the clients. Drone delivery, 3D yeah. printing, we, so crowdsourcing. We, we try to, but the challenge we have is we, we have a declining activity on mail. So um, less, uh, we, we, we should find a way of financing because it, it needs investment. It's not for free uh, go, go, go into the database and um, um, our shareholders, mainly the states in many countries, should be aware of that and give us the possibility to remain good players on this market because we have we can bring things that none the market will not bring, other operators will not bring because of our history, of our culture, and of the information we collect. Do you see any other possible uh, mergers and acquisitions with technical companies that would support you? With yes, this I, I, I was coming to that. Yeah. Now um, the question is, it goes back a little bit. Technology. Who says? Uh, who has the patent right or or or, or uh, a monopoly for technology? Nobody. And post office has used every single technology that has been developed with the advance of human uh, sciences. So. We use the horses when they're only horses. We use the railways when they're railways. We use the airlines. Absolutely. We use faxes when fax came. We use the internet when we are internet. Pigeons. Now the drones, we are having drones. Tomorrow we will have a... 3D printing. Probably a Superman. 3D printing. Uh, 3D yeah, 3D printing yeah. Whatever it is. So we, technology is not an end by itself. It's a means by which we can be able now to be creative enough to develop services that we use which can be faster and more efficient. That's the whole purpose of technology. Now coming to the point is, how do you get the technology, the chicken and the egg? Now, I'll tell you one thing. The post office has something which no other industry player has, a thing called trust. And I'm giving you one example. I was told last week in Moscow by the CEO, a lady, an old lady in a rural village meets the postman. 
aunt, this, she says, Mama, I don't know how to read this letter. He gave her a letter. He says, please read it for me. And she read it and he opened the envelope and read it for her and it was a bill. He says she was supposed to pay some bill. Then she just wait, wait a minute, she put it into, into her wallet, got the money and said, my son, go and please pay it for me and give the money to the postman. Tell me, which other organization can you have that kind of trust? So this is what is what the post is. It's like oxygen in the air. We take them for granted. But I can tell you, with the new modernization and the vision that we have of uh, real transformation, the post office is the next big thing. And this is what uh, I can tell you for sure, because I, I, I speak from position of knowledge. I've seen many countries that have transformed themselves. But th this requires planning, strategy, resources, and also uh, 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 supporting government and other institutions that we deal with. And that's what, what again, the advantage we have is we have a United Nations seal behind it that gives us credibility. And that's the advantage we come with the post. And, and, and um, many postal operators have been wise enough to decide they will not, they would not invent everything. So they are going on the market, living close to the startups, uh, buying some um, to, to, to be quicker and, and, and faster and, and better connected to uh, this new market. Uh, because if you try to reinvent everything, it, 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 right. it's... Yes. I, I, always, I, I miss that point. I miss that point. Madam, uh, my just an acquisition is what you're saying with, with the, with the mm. technology provider. Yes, we do. What happens here is that, um, I'll give you a good example of Turkish Post. The post runs the business, but they have got a private technology company that set up the marketplace, the, 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 the platform for them. And they share on 50-50 on, 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 on basis, I think. So we have got many private companies coming forward who are trying to invest with the posts where the rules and regulations of the country allow so that we can have that. So there is a lot of opening up of those kind of mergers or what you call uh, 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 partnerships, I would say more or less, mm -hmm. with the private sector. Uh, so we are not really a closed shop, uh, so, so to speak. Do you see different strategies for Europe versus United States in this uh, kind of direction? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well it, 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 it's difficult. Uh, the, the problem with the states is that um, the, um, the organization there is, 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 is really um, as nowhere anymore in the world, that is, it, it's still a federal agency with very strong regulation. I would say, uh, it's not politically correct, but monitored by the competitors uh, who are not very keen to see, to see them uh, going on, on, on new markets. And they are really strongly monitored by the postal regulatory uh, agency. Uh, and. Um, uh, they, they, they are trying and, and, and really uh, uh, on day-to-day on -to, -day to, 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 to be uh, more than to, to develop. But sometimes it, it's a question about resources as well. And uh, if your shareholder does, doesn't give you the minimum uh, means to, to, to develop on this new sector, you, you, you have difficulties. And here in Europe, um, it is very lively and, and, and innovation is key. We are trying at Post Europe also to benchmark, to, to organize. We, we have a, a, a market activity circle, we have operation activity circles where we can share uh, views. We, we, we are going at the moment to, to, to share on electric ve vehicles, for instance, but also on, on um, database uh, tomorrow. So you see, we, we try to, to, to remain uh, connected and, and we are happy also to share uh, outside Europe, inside the UPU, um, where, where there are also uh, places where we can benchmark, share uh, the, these new activities. Mr. Bottom, how do you see e-commerce? How do you see artificial intelligence, robotics? Do you see them as threats or opportunities for the postal industry? We have a growth opportunity uh, here. Uh, while uh, we face letter mail volume decrease, 
e-commerce is a growing market and the postal operators are the key partners for the e-commerce industry and in this regard the technology aspects that can be mentioned including robotics have to be used by the postal operators so uh, they have uh, uh, they mustn't neglect this development to to put aside to close their eyes no to incorporate it in their base uh, in their daily business and then of course uh, they can always uh, be at the forefront of the uh, innovation but building on this kind of uh, relatively traditional but also partially uh, new line holes uh, and delivery uh, value chains but uh, let me say one thing here robotics what are we talking about robotics uh, robots walking in the streets uh, I don't think that is uh, what we're talking about. Mechanization. Mm. Yeah. We already have that. We've Absolutely. been having that long time. Yes. Go to any major post office in the, in the world today. The speed at which things are sorted, the, 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 the intelligence of parcel sorting systems that we have, is, we have been there a long time ago. So what's new? Is the drones things you hear about here. Okay, good. It's a new, it's a new development, yes. So what does a drone do? A drone can pick a parcel and, and fly with it and deliver to a pop, uh, X point. We put the coordinates, it can fly there. Yes. So who, who owns the drone? You can buy it from the shop. I was in Dubai the other day and I was just walking in the duty-free shop and I found drones there uh, for uh, $2,000. I could buy it and fly it. So it's just it's, it's, it's simple. So now the question is how then do you see six million parcels <laughs> flying here today and you need yeah. a, a, an air tower controller here <laughs> to monitor the frequencies and control these things. Is it practical <laughs> to deliver ten, six, we have six billion parcels of the UPU, of the postal network? I think that is a little bit too, too dramatic in my yeah. view. What we can do and what we are doing already is that post offices have acquired some of these drones to deliver things in a very difficult areas Absolutely. where they have emergencies or yeah. let's say Absolutely. blood is required somewhere and Islands. someone can pick exactly. an island. Or this is already happening. Yeah. If you want to have a nice wedding on top of that mountain there and you want to impress your, your spouse, you can get pizza delivered to you <laughs> on a drone, post office can do it. Yeah, it's absolutely. possible to, to, to do that. But really the commercial drones to carry out all the passes all over the place uh, zigzagging around here in town, I think that may, we may take a bit of time to see that. And um, of course, we have to have regulations on that. We have to check, make sure that things flying here don't fall on people's heads and anything can happen. We have all manners of things that really, let's, we, people are a bit imaginative. But really, do we have the technology? Yes, it's there. Drones carry parcels and packets. And even developing countries in remote Africa are using it. Rwanda, for example, is using drone technology to carry out uh, bloods and everything to take it to, to remote places where doctors are nearby. So I think uh, we are there. We don't fear technology. We've always used technology. And we will be able to uh, provide uh, the services. All those things, there is service behind it. Exactly. We are, we, our interest is to see how we develop the service. Exactly. Which uses this technology to deliver. And I think, uh, and as DG said, um, you know, I think the post has always been uh, adopters of technology and, and very early on. And, and, and the adoption of technology is not only just on the service delivery side of things, so it's about the customer experience. How do you use technology in order to make the customer experience valuable and, and something that brings them back to the post repeatedly? But there's also a cost side of things, and, and that's about the mechanization, making operations more efficient, adoption of technology, uh, mechanical uh, engineering in order to uh, speed up and make um, the, the processing of mail items a lot faster. So there's two, two sides of things, service delivery and revenue generation, and then there's the, the cost side of things. And both you will see posts adopting, um, depending on how much resources and investments that they have, um, uh, investing in both sides. Absolutely. Mr. Bodon, in just one minute, the key message for your members, especially for the next year when you are celebrating 25 years, what should be your message for the members you have now? Yes, yeah, so uh, it is all about uh, cooperation. Uh, it is all about uh, interconnectivity. Uh, it is all about uh, developing uh, our services. And we have uh, the platform uh, for that uh, in Europe, 
that will get uh, 25 years old uh, next year, building on the traditions, of course, uh, that date back uh, beyond uh, that. And of course, uh, we will be always uh, at the disposal of the members because life is uh, changing, technology is changing, uh, market environment uh, is changing, customer needs are changing, but in all uh, times we will find uh, the possibility to, uh, to bring uh, synergies uh, into the life of our uh, members through cooperation. Thank you also very much and I Thank really you. hope Bucharest will be for you an innovation hub. Yes? Thank okay. you. Absolutely. Create new Thank things you. because we really want them on the market. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.